Hey peeps, Jess here, and for today's entry in the Craft Chocolate Maker series, we are talking about Soma Chocolate, the brand for those of you who took one look at the fruition video and went, no, I want everything. Oh yeah. So Soma was founded in 2003 in Toronto by pastry chef David Castellan and his partner, architect Cynthia Lung. David still runs the chocolate operations, and Cynthia runs like everything else, like social media, and even designs the buildings. It's super cool. They moved into a whiskey distillery in 2007, which is still their truffle operations, and they added a new location in 2016, which is where more of their bean to bar stuff happens. And yeah, they make almost everything you could ask for in terms of bean to bar chocolate. That is, they have ice cream and pastries and truffles and chocolate and so many things. In fact, I think the only things they don't make that you would hope they would eventually make would be they don't have any candy bars, so no like Snickers riff, and they don't have any bulk chocolate. And really looking at those, it's only a matter of time. They do have a more limited selection that you can buy online, but one day I think we all need to just go there and get gelato. And another neat thing is that they have a lot of allergy friendly items. In fact, they have this really cool scroll down that's got a lot of allergy friendly listings from like dairy free to nut free. It is not a nut free or dairy free facility. So definitely if you're super allergic, keep that in mind. But that's actually a really cool option. They just have so many options. And for today's disclaimer meter, we're a little bit higher than fruition. I don't know them very well. I have met David twice and Cynthia once, and I talk to Cynthia occasionally on Instagram, and they just seem like really cool peeps, and I know a lot about their chocolate. So, there we go. So why do I think you should try Soma? So when I was trying to write this part of the script, like, I couldn't write an actual coherent thought. There was like, just excitement. Every single time we've had Soma, it's just been really, really good. You can trust Soma to make something just magical. And then they do these nonsense things like Eggwin. I really wish they could ship Eggwin. And I also love just how inventive they get. Like there's an item that I can't eat that I've seen in person. It looks amazing. It is called the branch. They literally took a physical branch that Cynthia's dad gave her, a birch branch, and made it into a chocolate mold and made a giant hazelnut bar out of it. And it looks so good and I can't have any of it. Even when I was just trying to figure out how to winnow down the number of bars to show you, so you could go like, oh, these are the bars to try. I got stumped on what to pick because there were so many good options. I'm like, oh yeah, you should try this. You should try that. You should try that. And I only got it down to five which actually is kind of the problem with Soma. You will want to buy half the store, especially if you're in the US, because you'll look at the prices and go, oh no, so expensive. And then you remember the US dollar. So the bars run seven buck 50 to 18.50 Canadian on their website, which maxes out at about $13 US, which is about the price point you pay for most craft chocolate bars. And shipping costs me at least from Seattle, $23 US which you're like, oh, that's really expensive, but it's one day shipping. That being said, pro tip here, if you're shipping into the United States, please check Cincinnati weather before you ship. Cincinnati is the main hub for DHL out of Toronto. And one time I checked everything but Cincinnati and it turned out it was like 95 in Cincinnati when it was like 60 in Seattle. You don't have to go through that if you check the weather report. If you're really curious about Soma and don't want to pay as much for shipping, there are a few stores like Chocolopolis which do carry a very, very limited selection of Soma, or you could buy some of their smaller bars, because I actually bought one so you could see it. It starts at $2.30 Canadian. So you can get some cheapy things and see what you think, and then start buying half the store like I do. On to the tasting, the best part. We're starting with the guasare, guasare, which is from Venezuela. Honestly, to see how it goes. So I haven't had this bar yet. I wanted to have one where I didn't have opinions on it already. And when I was at the Craft Chocolate Experience, I asked Sin, what is a bar that you wish like more people tried? And she recommended this one. And honestly, reading the tasting notes, this is not gonna be a bar that I like because coffee is in the listing for the tasting notes and I hate coffee. So I'm very curious to see how it goes. And what's really, really cool about this is that, yes, they are bean to bar, but sometimes they go hyper bean to bar, like this bar. So this is a bar made with cacao grown on four multi-crop farms, interspersed with bananas and coffee in the region of Rosario. Oh, it's gonna really taste like coffee with that description. So if you're 
familiar with terroir and the concept of terroir, there is a belief that what you plant around a tree for cacao or wine will impact the tasting notes. And so this could taste really banana and really coffee and oh, okay. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. And then we have the art. Cynthia also does the artwork. So we have the bar. Can I get it open? Whoa. Um, this is just, I can smell the bar from here. It smells really malty and kind of creamy, but also kind of like cafe au lait. Yeah, it's just really dark, earthy coffee. Oh boy, I will trust in Cynthia. They have a beautiful mold. Just this chocolate mold is covered in cacao flowers and cacao pods and a little bird in tennis shoes. Yeah, just even more of that sort of dusty. I feel like this belongs with whiskey. We'll see. Cheers. So it's an incredibly smooth bar. A little bit of that maltiness going on, but more like a chocolate malt kind of softness to it. I'm gratefully not getting any of the coffee notes, but I am getting a really wonderful cocoa. It's just a gentle baked cocoa note at the end. Like it does really feel like a bar that belongs on top of a brownie. I wonder if this would want to pair with coffee so that the notes would be intensified. I'm just not gonna give any recommendations for that. Moving on. Next, we're talking about the bar that I feel like is the one that blows people's minds the most because it's chocolate. Let me, let me get a piece out first. This is a chocolate bar. Meet Soma Old School, which is their very unrefined cacao series. They do it in dark and milk. I personally prefer milk, but the dark comes in this teeny beanie single serving, which I want to at least show you how it looks. This is a two buck 30 option which hey, if you're interested in trying it, that is a serving. I consider a stick or a half a stick to be how much I like to eat. So it's a way to go. What's really cool about these is these are two and three ingredient bars. So this is just cacao and sugar, and this has added milk powder. And honestly, it's kind of like eating a chocolate shortbread cookie. It's a little dense, but oh, it's fun. Cheers. Mm. Yeah, it's a milky cookie. So you have some milkiness from the milk powder. The sugar crystals aren't very well refined, so you have this lovely crunch and then just kind of this like soft cocoa note. Like I remember the first time I tried this and my brain was like, this is a chocolate bar. What even is happening? And every time I'm just like, this is the most delightful little thing. So I think if anything, if you're just wanting to try something so unique and so unusual to chocolate, old school is probably one of the most unique bars on the market. And again, only three ingredients. I just realized I need to not continue eating this so I can do more of the reviews. More for later. Next. We have the Creole Gardens Haiti 55. This is probably one of my favorite milk chocolates from them besides old school. So the Creole Gardens is also the Pisa or Produit des Îles SA, which is the big cooperative for Haiti. There is also a 70%, I just get this. And as you can see, like, yeah, we just eat it all the time. It's got the same molds. You're not seeing anything visually different, just a different color. Yeah, caramel and a bit almost not quite peach. That like sort of jam sweetness note. Cheers. I recommend this for anyone who wants really good snacking chocolate that's heavy on the caramel notes. Not quite a Hershey's bar, but that similar sweetness, but without the child labor. It is a very different sweetness than Hershey's though, so I wouldn't go for this as a Hershey's dupe, but it is really, really snackable. Next we have the raspberry bar, which first I wanted to show you it's the same size as all their minis. So the minis are usually 35 grams and this one's 33. These all run about eight bucks Canadian. And trust me, never ever eat a large quantity of this. When you think of a raspberry bar, you're probably thinking of like raspberries and cream, something light, something delicate. Get all those ideas out of your head before you touch this bar. This only has three ingredients. It has cocoa butter, sugar, raspberries, and they use freeze dried fruit in all of their cocoa butter series. So be ready for some serious intensity. Oh boy. It's a good bar, but you'll see. Yeah, it, just, it smells like raspberry fruit leather. So when I eat this, I break off the smallest piece I can do. Cheers. It's so tart every time I need water. So it starts a bit crumbly. And then as it melts and warms up on your tongue, it's just straight raspberry. And not like eating a fresh raspberry that fresh, juicy tartness. No, it's just tart. Berry, and it's tart, and it's very good, but it's very intense. If you're someone who likes like sour candies as a kid and wants to have that experience in a fruit form in chocolate, here's your bar. 
There are others in the cocoa butter series, including black currant and mango. So if this isn't your jam, definitely try any of them. They're all solid. My only heads up is that if you are someone who has oral allergy syndrome, please eat the cocoa butter bars with a word of caution because the freeze dried berries can have you react. I did react very mildly to the peach bar. And so I'd rather make sure that you know before you buy. Last, dear goodness not least, we have the pecan pie tumbled pecans. So the pecans are part of the tumbled series. Normal looks more like this. The tumbleds, these are tiny bits of ginger. Clearly we've been eating through them, they're very intense though, are normally coated in a 62% their blend known as Dream Machine. This is caramel milk chocolate. It is incredibly snackable and I got into eating these because Sin gave me some at the Craft Chocolate Experience and I just ran around eating them all day and it was the best. It's kind of like if you enjoy that caramel milky sweetness of Hershey's but with a pecan inside for a soft crunch. You can understand why I've eaten a lot of these. They're not necessarily the prettiest things but they are tasty. Cheers. Need to eat the other one before I give a comment. These are so snackable. And actually rather filling because there's a fair bit of chocolate on top of each pecan. The problem is they're just sweet enough that you will eat a lot of them if given the opportunity. Maybe eat them with ginger so it balances out. Do I have any actually useful ordering advice for beginners? So I was just just starting out and my budget was small. I would get Dark Side of the Mug. It's just an amazing drinking chocolate and then you can bake with it and do whatever. I would get the Raspberry Bar because it is hilarious the first time you try it. It's such an eye-opening experience to what white chocolate can do. And then I would get the old school milk. I just really love the shortbread cookiness of the milk. But really, get whatever sounds good. I've had the best time ordering random stuff and being like, okay, I'll see if it's any good. And that's amazing. That's actually how I found the Creole Gardens 55. We were like, oh look, there's a new origin. And we bought the 70 and the 55. And we're like, okay, we'll see what's good. And the 55 was awesome. And we just kept on ordering the 55. And those are my thoughts on Soma. I hope it helped you learn a little bit more about the brand. Clearly this is the tip of their chocolate iceberg. And I highly, highly recommend you just scroll to that site try whatever sounds good, have the best time, and let me know what you bought because I'm always curious to see what people get. And someone please get Eggwin and let me know. And with that, I will catch you next time. Laters! The true best part of ending this video, the fact that everything I put on screen is now completely open season and we can eat all of it. <laughs>